So how did you become interested, or when did you become interested in conjoint when moved to the second book that you Well, and to? in that work, I just you kind of start paying attention to freaks once you start researching them. Um, and uh, I had heard about Daisy and Violet Hilton. They were in a film that was made by Todd Browning called Freaks, uh, a very sort of um, a cult film, actually, an American cult film. Um, but I was contacted by a publisher, actually, from Rutgers University Press to contribute a volume, edit a volume, for a series called Subterranean Lives that focuses on marginalized, disempowered people. He wanted something along the line of, um, of a freak memoir, an autobiography, and mentioned Daisy and Violet's um, autobiography, which I hadn't heard of until that moment. I tracked down a copy of it, but found that it was published with this Chained for Life story, which was essentially softcore pornography, and I was fascinated by the very different tellings of you know this sis these sisters' lives. So I brought that back to him. He didn't like the idea, and I found an editor who did. <sighs> and that editor actually also reminded me of Millie and Christine's autobiography. So the whole thing kind of came together in that in that way. It's very once you start looking at the notion of what it means to be a conjoined twin in terms of the writing of autobiography and what we think about autobiography, that it is the story of, you know, sort of conventionally one great man. Um, it's a very interesting thing to look at these stories told by two women that are physically, you know, in one body, like essentially. Yeah. yeah, it is absolutely yeah. wonderfully written. Um, and as I was reading, I was thinking about what are we learning? Can you tell us a little bit about how, what we can learn from their lives and what they've gone through mm -hmm. reading their book? I think the first thing you learn, in, from particularly from these two autobiographies, is that these women did not want to be medically separated. That's very, very clear. Um, they both say that in very distinct ways. Millie and Christine end their autobiography saying that we have one purpose, one desire, one heart. So they literally did not have one heart, but that's a metaphor for the way they felt. I think what you learn is that what we think about as um, people that are not conjoined, right, uh, we assume that if a set of conjoined twins comes into the world, that the first thing we should do is separate them and allow them to live individual normalized lives. But in fact, from the perspective of the conjoined twin, what it means to have that kind of subjectivity in that life is a very, very different thing. Um, complicated and um, uh, extremely difficult in many, many ways. But there is a set, uh, there's a sense of, um, uh, harmoniousness that they both talk about that they both had to learn as children very basically just to get through the day um, and as one scholar puts it um, a medical ethicist actually who talks about the separation of conjoined twins she said when you read these autobiographies you find out that in fact maybe we could all benefit from a little bit more twin behavior <laughs> which I think is true well uh as I said, I keep saying this, how fascinating and wonderful these books are and your research, and I could go on and on and ask you more questions, uh, but uh, this is not all you do. That's your <laughs> research. Uh, you're also um, the director of honors program here at uh, EKU, which is one of uh, uh, one of the best honors program in nation. So tell us a little bit about the program. Um, the EKU Honors Program is uh, first and foremost an opportunity to give students who are highly motivated, um, usually but not always academically excellent for when they come into the program, and to give them an opportunity to have additional sort of research opportunities, community opportunities, and a different way to approach their general education curriculum. All of our students complete a senior thesis, which means they do significant research. Um, so it's important to me that I do research, mm -hmm. because then when I speak to them about the research that they're doing, I'm really coming from a position of someone who's gone through the difficulties that they're going through. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us. This has been great talking with you. Uh, that's it for uh, this edition of Focus on Scholarship. Uh, I'd like to thank our guest, Linda Frost, and invite you to read Conjoined Twins in Black and White. You can find copies in John Grant Crab Library. Please join us next time as we continue our series of webcasts celebrating the scholarly and creative achievements of the faculty and staff at Eastern Kentucky University.